Welcome back to Davis Media Access. We are here for another episode of The City Considers. And today we're catching up with Valley Clean Energy, about 18 months after the Community Choice Energy Provider launched. And my guests today are Lucas Ferrix, who is a Davis City Council member and a member of the board of Valley Clean Energy, and Don Saylor, also a board member and our Yolo County Supervisor. So welcome to you both. Thanks Thank you. so much. So, our conversation today about Valley Clean Energy is happening in the context of our giant utility provider, PG&E, having filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Yeah. And leading up to that, just having a lot of issues and consumers having a lot of issue with PG&E. And in the midst of that, 18 months ago, comes a community choice energy provider, Valley Clean Energy. So let's talk about, I know a lot of work went into launching it. I know a lot has happened over its first 18 months of existence. So let's start there and whichever of you wants to start first is fine. Sure. Um, Supervisor, if you want to go ahead. Well, I'll just start by <coughs> just mentioning what Valley Clean Energy is. Right. It's, it's one of 19 community choice energy programs that are operating now in California. Together, those CCEs serve about 10 million of California's 39 million people. So each of the, of the CCEs are partnerships of local jurisdictions. In our case, it started out with Woodland, Davis, and right. the unincorporated areas of Yolo County forming a partnership. We purchase inter electrical energy and provide it to ratepayers through the infrastructure of Pacific Gas and Electric, our local investor-owned utility. Right. So the PG&E still owns the poles and the wires, right. but the electrical energy supply is provided uh, by Valley Clean Energy. We have the, a unique partnership with the Sacramento Municipal Utility District. SMUD provides the, the back room operations, the call center. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they really do all of, our, of, the, of the professional technical work and we're governed by a board that is made up of two members of the Davis City Council, Lucas and Dan, two members of the Woodland City Council, uh, Dan Carson that is, right. Luke, uh, two members of the Woodland City Council, Tom Stallard and Angel Barajas, and uh, two members of the Board of Supervisors, Gary Sandy and myself. Yeah. Uh, we, West, uh, West Sacramento is considering a potential joining in the mm -hmm. future, and Winters has made a decision to join and they'll be uh, they'll be starting up as associate members this next Just, meeting. Yeah, this month. Yep. So there are some clear differences <clears throat> between Community Choice Energy and PG&E, for example. And that has to do with the, the way we choose, um, where the power comes from, mm -hmm. and right. then the rate structure. Can, can you speak to those? Yeah. And Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think it's, it's also, I think, uh, one of the other major uh, issues that sort of separates community choice energy providers from the investor-owned utilities is also uh, the ability of local control, too. Right. So I think one of the things that we were most excited about um, is that instead of today, you know, or before, before Valley Clean Energy as it existed, you had to go down to you know, San Francisco, if you had uh, issues in ever, if there was ever any sort of meetings at PG&E or at uh, the, um, the Public Utilities it's, Commission, mm -hmm. you know, in, that's based in San Francisco. But here in Yolo County, our meetings rotate between Davis and Woodland and very soon winters. And so we are, you know, we have our regular monthly board meetings. And so people are able to actually really participate locally. Uh, and, and, and then, of course, they see us in the supermarket and the groceries, you know, in the, it, you know, out in the community farmer's market and other places. So. <laughs> Everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and so they have that ability, too. Um, the other thing that, you know, one of the real reasons for doing a community choice energy program was uh, to actually provide uh, more renewable energy, higher amounts of renewable energy to our community. You know, all of our communities uh, have a lot of uh, goals as related to climate change and how to prepare right. and adapt for climate change. And, and the consequences of that. And one of the things that we have, both in the city of Davis, but also the Yolo County are doing is that we have realized that we can actually really help meet our uh, climate change goals mm -hmm. by having better choices in terms of renewable energy. So, so. what are some of those renewable sources that, that uh, Valley Clean Energy is, is purchasing and then yeah. passing on to consumers? So certainly solar is a very typical one, mm -hmm. you know, regardless of where the energy is coming from, but also um, large hydropower. So, you know, so from water from, you know, that's from coming from dams, particularly in the Pacific Northwest. And then also um, wind, increasingly wind power as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think the thing that's really interesting 
actually one thing that we find uh, we, is, was pretty cool for us to do is be able to also, we're purchasing the, the power that's generated by a very small dam up in, um, uh, in Lake County in by Indian Valley Reservoir mm -hmm. that is actually owned by the Yolo County uh, Flood Control and Water Conservation District. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, you know, that it's a, about four, it's how large is, or how small is that? Four megawatts, I think it's pretty small. But um, pg and &E actually chose to no longer buy that power um, that was being generated locally. Uh, and so Valley Clean Energy actually um, negotiated that contract. So we are actually generating power a little bit lo more locally. So, Interesting. Yeah. So we're, we're transparent, our, media, our rate structures are set in, in open public meetings. There's no money going to uh, high-priced high uh, board members or, or executive bonuses mm -hmm. or, or shareholders. Investors, investors. shareholders, yeah. Exactly. So all the money comes back into, right. in, in this first year of operation we started, we launched in, in June 2018 mm -hmm. for the first set of customers. Uh, and that first year, we in, we were able to generate. Uh, we first of all, we set rates at two and a half percent lower than PG&E's right. rates for every ca rate category. We generated about fifty-one million dollars in ratepayer revenue with that lower rate. We have an eight million dollar fund balance that first year, and we were able to repay the startup loans to Woodland, Davis, and Yolo County, each of those three, each, each started out with $500,000 in a loan. We paid that back, yeah. and we're, so, we, the, the, so we wanted this first year to be financially stable right. and show ratepayers that we could deliver on the, on the commitment. And that kind of return doesn't happen when you're paying shareholders, as, as right. you said. Yeah, so right. another thing I think is interesting is uh, doing a little bit of research. Most of the, the CCEs are in considerably more dense areas, mm -hmm. but Yolo mm -hmm. County being Yolo County, um, I, I, I imagine it took a lot of energy to Okay, pun, pun no, not pun intended, intended <laughs> but to, to push this through, especially in an area where you don't have the population base and the voting base of, say, San Francisco or even right. Marin County. So, um, so what I'm hearing is 18 months in, we've done well on the money front. We've done well on, I know there was a lot of confusion about the opt out, how you're a customer unless you opt out. And, right. and there were, you know, if you follow... Next door and other sources, there was a lot of chatter in those early days about Absolutely. that and a lot of confusion. So it seems like we've kind of sorted through all of that. The other interesting thing that happened is that Valley Clean Energy, as you know, made a bid, uh, a $3 million bid to purchase, $300 million, $300 million yeah. bid to purchase uh, PG&E's assets in Yolo County after PG&E filed for Chapter 11. And I understand they declined that bid, but I also understand that uh, the the powers that be are not considering that this is a done deal. So can you speak to that? Yeah, just a, give a little bit of perspective on this. I think, you know, so firstly, there's been a long history in YOLO of, of wanting to have an sort of additional options when it comes to uh, energy in the electricity market, right? I mean, folks will remember, you know, 15 or so years ago, an attempt to uh, be, an, you know, a vote was taken, of course, but in, in both here in, in Yolo County, but right. also in Sacramento, uh, an attempt to be annexed into the Sacramento Util Municipal Utility District territory mm -hmm. um, that d unfortunately failed. Um, but uh, you know that a lot of folks have wanted to still see something like that happen over time, municipalization of the utility. Uh, so Valley Clean Energy, it's in it in and of itself is not that. I mean, it's really we're procuring. We are yes, locally governed and such, but we're really about procuring the energy, buying the energy. Right. Um, but I think there's a real opportunity now that with PG&E being in bankruptcy, we are not also, I, would, I think it's important to note, we're not alone in this. A variety of local governments around the state are also very interested in the same option. They think there's a different you know, potential for uh, their sort of electricity future. And so they are really uh, Nevada County, San Francisco, San Jose, San, South San Joaquin Irrigation District, and then of, as well as Yolo County have all put in specific bids to try to acquire the um, infrastructure for, of PG&E to basically create municipal utilities. So ultimately, I assume that will be decided in bankruptcy court if they've declined the bid. 
then it, it gets punted down the road, correct? It'll, ultimately, it'll become a, a decision by the judge involved in the bankruptcy court. Mm -hmm. Our offer is for, it was, was carefully crafted based on a, assessments of the value of the, inf of the, of the uh, facilities. Uh, we are, you know, there's been a, a tremendous amount of uproar around the, the public safety power outages. Mm -hmm. There's concern by many people in, in California who are customers of the investor-owned utility about the, the diversion of, of the resources into profits and into shareholder dividends. Certainly, yeah. So what this, is, what this is about is finding a way to have the utilities actually serve the public. Oh, absolutely. To have, and we have the capacity as a public agency to finance some of the uh, so, so, uh, to finance the investment, mm -hmm. to purchase the, the infrastructure, and then to finance the in necessary repairs at a much lower cost than a private uh, profit-oriented company. Right. So we have, the, we have some opportunities here that we're pursuing, and it's, it, it's, it's only one of the things that we're doing because we're at the same time that we are participating in this bankruptcy proceeding mm -hmm. through making this offer, we are also ramping up to take on new customers. And some of the new customers for the first time, if uh, many people who have been early adapters of rooftop solar mm -hmm. on their own homes or businesses, right. they've not been included yet because of, there's, a, there's a cash flow problem for the, when they first come in. Yeah. But starting in January, we're talking now in early, yep. in early December, but starting in January 2020, right. those customers will, be, uh, will have the opportunity to to be served in, by Valley Clean Energy also. That's probably game changing for both them and Valley Clean Energy exactly. yeah. because that, that is the future. And in addition to all the other you know, things that, that you mentioned, I, I think we all have a mandate too to really pursue those cleaner sources and to, right. to lower the carbon footprint around our energy consumption exactly. and our sources. So, um, so this case aside, this, uh, the bankruptcy proceedings aside, and bringing on new customers, when you look a year down the road, what else can we expect to see from Valley Clean Energy? I think one of the things that's really interesting is that, you know, we've heard from certainly a lot of uh, citizens here in, you know, throughout Yolo County and our constituents of some of the types of things they'd like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Valley Clean Energy, sort of the types of programming they'd like to see us take on. And, and a lot of other, a lot of the other CCE programs and right. other parts of the state are doing a lot. You, I think you can, and very much so, one thing that's very exciting, actually, you'll see this very soon, is Valley Clean Energy was uh, received a, about a $3 million grant um, just this a couple months ago mm -hmm. from the Sacramento Area Council of Governments for uh, electrification, transportation electrification, so to install uh, chargers around parts of Yolo County, so additional uh, car chargers, electric car chargers. Um, I think those are the types of things and those types of programs you're going to start to see more and more of um, as a result of the investments that Valley Clean Energy makes. So our first, our first year, first couple of years, the idea is to make sure we're, we can do the job, that we're, that we're financially stable. We are very interested in generating power locally, mm -hmm. finding ways of, of having greater energy efficiencies and paying, paying back into, into the, the community. Uh, this is a transparent operation, and we, we do respond to what, what folks bring to us. Local governments have for a long time done very sophisticated operations. There are many electrical companies operated by local governments. Right. We currently operate wastewater treatment systems, water, water delivery systems, landfill operations that are very sophisticated. Absolutely. So we can operate an electrical yeah. uh, supply and infrastructure system when we bring in the right experts to do it for us sure. and have it be governed by people elected by by, by their own community. Yeah, yeah. And I imagine the success of the wastewater treatment facility, for example, has been a real boon in terms of pursuing these efforts because as you said, okay, here's an example of how this works. Right. And now let's create other examples of how that works. Right. Absolutely. We're, uh, we're winding down our time here. Yeah. So any last thoughts, Lucas? We are been it's been a real pleasure and an honor to be able to be participating in this process from its you know sort of you know so from the very beginning and we actually have come a long way <laughs> over the course of this past year yeah. and a half and we're really excited to see what the the next few years holds for Valley Clean Energy. Good.
Good. Yeah. Well, I want to thank you both for joining. I thank know you're you. both busy, so appreciate always appreciate you coming in here. And I want to let you at home know that uh, you can find out more about Valley Clean Energy by going to valleycleanenergy.org. For as long as that .org domain exists, I don't know if you heard the news. No, <laughs> it's yet. it's been uh, it's a topic for another show, but it's been uh, uh, basically. Uh, taken over by a, a private owner now, and it kind of puts nonprofits and government organizations at risk. Oh, I'll fill you in oh off camera. Wow. So, we have been talking today about Valley Clean Energy and discussing some of its successes in its first 18 months of operation with a little look toward the future. And uh, I think we'll bring you back down the line and we'll maybe after uh, the bankruptcy <laughs> hearings and, and kind of see what's going on with Valley Clean Energy. Thanks so much for tuning in. Be sure to check out our archive of all these programs on dctv.davismedia.org. I'm Autumn Labay Renault. See you next time.